Okay, great. So welcome everyone to this meeting, uh, which uh, this meeting, this uh, webinar, I think I've got meetings on the brain, um, this webinar, Making Meetings Pop. Um, I thought this would be a good topic for a webinar because um, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I certainly don't particularly enjoy meetings. And um, when I've worked in companies and, uh, and organizations, most meetings that I've been part of have been fairly ineffective, uh, usually with a lot of people and, you know, no clear agenda, no clear action plans, and they often go on for too long. And I know that's not the case for every single meeting, but I think many people uh, do get frustrated uh, around meetings. So there'll be points in the webinar when I'm going to ask you some questions, ask you to think about something. Please do use the chat, uh, the chat space to type your responses. Um, so I'm, there's a few images here around um, about meetings. I, I, I feel people are often quite confused when they come out of a meeting. They often don't quite know what they should be doing next uh, or what the procedure is for follow up and um, how you do that. I mean, I had two meetings last week where there was no actual clarity around what the next steps would be, um, which was quite, quite frustrating and, 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 and not great. Um, so I want you to just think about the last meeting that you went to um, and to think about, you know, first of all, what kind of meeting was it? Was it a meeting with a client? Was it a meeting with colleagues? Was it a meeting with, um, you know, somebody else that you work with? What, what kind of meeting was it? Perhaps it was a business planning meeting. Perhaps it was a um, a meeting to have a discussion about something particular. So what kind of meeting was it? And what did you feel was positive about it? And what was not so great? And I'll just give you a chance to think about that and maybe also type some responses into the chat box and share with us uh, the last meeting that you went to. Um, so I'll share a little bit about my last two meetings. So the first one was with uh, one of my clients and they're a big client, big organization, and it was about um, producing some materials for them. And we had a very good meeting. Um, however, there was no agenda for the meeting. So I came to the meeting prepared with some things that I wanted to ask, but there was no actual agenda. It was more like a chat, which went on for about an hour and a half, which for me was quite a long time, I think, to be sitting in the meeting. Um, and I felt that I was having, they'd asked for the meeting, but I felt that I was having to kind of steer the meeting. Um, and at the end of it, it wasn't clear who was supposed to be taking what action. Absolutely no clarity at all. So I, I think I just sent a nice thank you email and, and put down a few points that I thought we had clarified and discussed and, and looking for their confirmation. Um, so Chris is saying business proposition, the rapport was great but lacked structure. I was a little confused as to who they were, what they wanted or offered. <laughs> oh dear, that's not good, is it? Um, well, one of the things we'll talk about in this webinar is, is what you should be doing when you take part in a meeting, as well as what you should be doing when you are in charge of the meeting. Positives, keeping to the end agenda and keeping to one hour. So that's really good. And that is probably down to the person who was in charge of the meeting. And, and people who run great meetings do that. They keep to the agenda, they keep things on course, and they keep it short. Um, and usually the complaints are around it being too long and, and lack of clarity. So as we're going through the webinar, you might might some other things might occur to you around the last meeting that you went to so do feel free to pop that into the chat box um i don't think i need to introduce myself particularly to the people who are here today but for those who are listening on the recording i'm emma sue prince and i'm author of seven skills for the future director of unimenta these are some images of some of the people that we work with and i do a lot of materials design consultancy working with soft skills and uh, delivering training um, so meetings are often part of that. You often have to have meetings to um, discuss uh, training and to agree training and that and that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to talk first about what people hate about meetings. So I've got a few statistics here and sort of what people say about you know what they really don't like about meetings, and then you may also be able to add your 
uh, your points in the chat box, what you hate about meetings. Um, and also just unpick a little bit why so many meetings are ineffective, you know, what makes them ineffective. Um, I would argue that a lot of meetings are probably not even necessary, but that's a that's probably you know something something to to, to think about that you know um, they're often um, not uh, you know you perhaps don't need to have a meeting for the particular area that you want to discuss. Um, I want to also run through tips for when you are running a meeting, so ways that you can keep the meeting really focused and really clear, and tips for taking part in meetings. Um, because we can easily, if especially if we're in a meeting that isn't going so well, it's very easy for us to switch off. So, but there are things that you can do when you're taking part in the meeting, which are quite important. Um, and then we'll, to, to end up, we will talk about different types of meeting and the future of meetings. You know, are we going to, you know, the way that we work now, are we going to keep having meetings? What kind of meetings will they be? What will they look like going forward? So. Um, here's just a few uh, little funny things about meetings. Um, I just thought, I, I found these images and thought they were quite amusing. Um, I survived another meeting that should have been an email. Um, again, email is not the greatest form of communication either, but you know, perhaps the meeting itself wasn't actually necessary. Um, and then you have meetings to have another meeting and talk about the last meeting that you had and, and, and so on. So um, I just thought these were quite amusing. So I thought I'd put them up up, up here around meetings um, and um, looking at, you know, what's often is happening in a meeting, uh, what people are really thinking. So often you'll have somebody who's showing a really boring presentation or slides um, or perhaps not presenting information very, very well and people switch off. And we've probably all done that. We've probably all had points at meetings where we've just switched off and we're not interested and we're not listening um, and I suspect a lot of meetings actually do uh, you know th this does actually happen um, and the fact is that you know most meetings are ineffective because they just take up too much time and it's not just the time during the meeting it's the lead up and the preparation and the communication that goes before the meeting and the follow-ups that happen afterwards um, so if, you know in my experience I've been to way too many meetings where um, quite often there are just too many people in the room um, some are arriving late others might leave early um, no agenda no one in charge a lot of people on their phones and you know, very few people are actually listening. That's been my experience of meetings. And I guess a lot of it depends on whether you are having a one-to-one -one meeting or whether you are having a meeting with several people. And I guess the kind of meetings I'm talking about more here are um, meetings where you are likely to be with several people because that's where you often have you know, too many people and no clear agenda and so on. Although of course these things also happen one-to-one. -one. Um, so, you know, people say meetings are ineffective, they don't actually lead to concrete actions, they take up too much time, lack of clarity I've talked about, no follow-up summaries, and, and actually no clarity on who's meant to be providing that summary. So, you know, who's meant to do that, and has somebody actually got that role to do that? Um, and the biggest thing of all, perhaps, is, is, is a lack of accountability. So it's not clear who should do what as a result of that meeting. So you can have a great meeting, like I had these two great meetings last week, but I'm left this week really not knowing what's meant to be happening next or who is meant to be doing what. And I still have no response. Uh, and it's Tuesday, you know, so it's, it, it's, it's not good. Um, and also a lot of meetings suffer from nobody being in charge. So when I ask my husband about some of the meetings he goes to in his work, and I'll often you know, I'll say how many people were at the meeting and he'll say 20, 25 people, which is a massive number. And I'll say, was anybody in charge? He says, no. Um, which is kind of shocking in a way that there's nobody actually keeping uh, an agenda or steering the discussion of the meeting. And that I think this happens in lots and lots of organizations. It's a complete waste of time. Um, and then you have a lot of this tuning out that I was talking about as well. So, I'm going to go through a few reasons why people hate meetings, which kind of just support some of the things that I've been saying. Um, and again, feel free to um, add anything you want to in the in the chat box. But here you've got some statistics around what people are, you know, saying. Um, so interestingly, you know, why am I here? 
you know, so I think a lot of meetings, especially ones where there's lots of people, probably some of those people don't really need to be at that meeting, but for some reason, you know, they have a particular meeting on a particular day and all the reps or all the departments have to have somebody there. Um, meetings can get, get very easily off track, especially if there's no agenda and no one steering it, so it ends up becoming, you know, just a kind of series of conversations. Um, and when you add into the fact that people don't really listen very well either, um, it's no wonder that people come out and think, well, you know, what were we talking about and what did we, what did we agree? Um, and that's also down to the person facilitating, because even if you do have a chair and even if you do have somebody, um, you know, steering the meeting through, they don't always necessarily address people's behaviour. So you can have a meeting and somebody is in charge of it, but people are on their phones the whole time, but that person doesn't actually say anything about that or address it. And the main complaint here is that meetings just take up too much time, too many of them and, and, and too time consuming. Um, but it also depends on who's in charge. And I think this is quite funny. So when uh, people talk about meetings that they are in charge of, they say that they're run very well. But when they talk about meetings that other people are in charge of, they say, actually, they don't run very well. So make of that what you will. But I think that's quite a funny uh, statistic there. So perhaps that says that, you know, we we uh, uh, overestimate our own capabilities when it comes to, to running a meeting, perhaps. So. Again, some of the main things why people don't like meetings um, and it's, you know, all of these things, I'm sure you can relate to some of them. I'm sure you've experienced some of these things that uh, for, from meetings. And I've probably just talked about several of them, which um, link to the meetings I've had recently. Um, and just things like, you know, when a meeting doesn't start on time, that often causes a lot of issues. So people just arriving at different times and you think, well, what, what is that all about? You know, is that about people wanting to show that their time is more valuable? Um, is it about people not being organized or just feeling too overly loaded you know what is that um, and I think sometimes there's a there's a misperception that having meetings is somehow being productive you know getting everyone together in a room is somehow productive but actually it's not it's not unless you have those parameters uh, around it so these are some of the reasons that people generally and it is a huge generalization but generally why they really just don't like meetings and if you kind of raise your awareness a little bit of this on this topic and talk to other people about their experiences of meetings, you'll find that they'll come up with a lot of these things. There'll be a bit of eye rolling, you know, not another meeting, um, you know. And, and one thing I haven't even mentioned at all is the um, huge sort of shroud of secrecy around meeting rooms. So every organisation I go into, doesn't matter what organisation it is, there's always a thing about the rooms, like who's booked the room and how long have they booked it for. And invariably, you'll be in the middle of a meeting and somebody will pop the head around the door and say, oh, you know, I've got this room booked from such and such. And I, I actually think that's quite funny because I haven't, every organisation that I've, I've been to, and they're all very different organisations from, from banks to NHS trusts to law firms, the same things come up around the meeting rooms. Okay, so, I want to talk through um, some of the things that we can do if we are in charge of a meeting. So I don't know how often you are in charge of a meeting that's running, but these are some of the things that you can be doing to make a meeting run uh, more effectively. Um, and I think initially it's about being quite thoughtful and perhaps even mindful um, about uh, about meetings. So really thinking about who needs to be there, you know, who are the most crucial people to have at that meeting? What is the purpose of the meeting? Why, why are you having the meeting? Um, and um, what, what do you want to achieve as a result of this meeting? You know, what are the outcomes that you would like to have from this meeting? And this is important that you know what you want to achieve. Do you have a particular um, set of actions that you want people to go away and do? Um, do you want there to be a, a specific amount of clarity around a particular issue? You know, is, is the meeting a brainstorming meeting? If so, you want to capture some of those ideas. 
is you know so it's really thinking about what you want to achieve or the person that's that's in charge of the meeting what do they want to achieve as a result of having that meeting and then you need to plan it and you need to plan how you're going to run it collaboratively and productively and that really means working within um, a clear structure but allowing people to respond. And of course, if you've got too many people at the meeting, you know, if you've got over six people at a meeting, it can be quite hard to run that and to actually enable everybody to, um, to be part of that meeting, to actually take part and, and contribute with ideas. So that's another thing that you have to think about um, when, when you're thinking about how many people to have at the meeting. But what's important is that everyone should walk away with clear action steps. That's every single person in the meeting, which is why it's so important to think about who should be there. Because if you've got a meeting with a huge number of people, um, they're not all going to have action steps that they're going to take on as a result of that meeting. So in that case, do they actually need to be there? That's the question I would be asking. You know, do they actually need to be there? OK, so let's talk through. I've got 10 steps around uh, tips for running a meeting. Um, I thought I'd show you this slide first just because uh, I liked it and I thought it was quite useful um, for thinking about meetings in general. So, you know, like, you know, meeting in the morning at the start of the week for a successful meeting is one tip. Um, eye, eye contact, top nonverbal indicator of a positive meeting. Um, the meeting venue. Uh, temperature of the room, you know, what are the chairs like, the facilitator. So all of these things, I think, um, play a role when it comes to meetings. Um, and how you, you know, if you're meeting somebody you haven't met before, perhaps using social media platform to interact with that person first. Um, some, some tips here around small talk and so on. But let's look at some of the things that you can do if you are in charge of a meeting. So the first, and and uh, this is one that Kate came up with straight, straight away at the beginning of something positive, is um, time. And that means starting on time, even if not everybody's there, starting on time, staying on schedule and ending on time. Um, so it's, it's important. So also what's important here is setting some ground rules for the meeting so you know meeting does not equal relaxing in a room with a big table and just kind of tuning out which sadly it quite often is, is what a meeting is so the person if you're in charge of that meeting start it on time end it on time and keep it short the second thing um, is to not use PowerPoint <laughs> if you can so obviously it depends on the nature of the meeting and it depends on on what you, what you want to achieve from the meeting and maybe part of that meeting is about presenting some information but try to minimize PowerPoint as much as you can uh, because if some of it's about information you might be able to send some of that ahead of the meeting um, you don't necessarily have to show every single thing uh, on PowerPoint slides in the meeting. So try and keep them to a minimum if you can. Um, and also be aware that you don't actually have to have them at all. You know, So I think in a meeting, the, the problem with PowerPoint is that when you get people in a room and, and you've got them around a the table and you start using PowerPoint, there is a tendency for the people there to sort of sit back and relax and kind of you know watch the presentation. Um, and you really want a meeting to, not, to be much more collaborative than that. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying perhaps, you know, lessen the use of PowerPoint if you can. The third one is to just keep meetings really, really short. So I really like this idea of holding a 22 minute meeting. Um, and when I came across this, I thought, oh, it's kind of cool, you know, 22 minute meeting. So you schedule it and you have uh, a very, very clear agenda. Um, you send any reading ahead of time, you start on time, stand up. So that's another another kind of, you know, you don't have to necessarily all be sitting down for a meeting. Um, uh, I, on, on Saturday, I was with Chris, who's on the webinar today, and we were at his office and we're looking at the space and thinking about how one could perhaps run a session or, or, or a workshop. And we were talking about having people just standing up. And there's no reason why a meeting can't be with people standing up. It actually keeps people more alert, you know. Um, avoid having laptops all around the table. Um, 
but certainly have somebody who is um, presenting and having a note taker and yeah walking meetings Kate yeah that, that they are becoming more common and they're often as you say really really productive because you're just taking it away from that kind of very corporate sort of um, model of sitting in a room around a table um, no phones no exceptions um, and focus so if you have a meeting within uh, 22 minutes you're going to have to focus it and you're going to have to keep it strictly on topic um, and in order to create attention in the meeting you've got to have those phones off so I quite like this idea of having it uh, just having a much shorter meeting and deciding to have a, a shorter meeting um, I'm also a fan of 30 minute meetings by the way but that's my maximum I think um, never have a meeting without a clear purpose so I talked about that earlier on um, you know, if it's just getting together to talk, it's not a meeting. It, it actually is not a meeting. Um, so, you know, face-to-face -face time is important socially. It's important to have those chats. It's important to interact with others, but don't confuse that with having a meeting. So with a meeting, we're talking about a different way of interacting. Um, of course, at the beginning of a meeting, it's nice to have a bit of social interaction um, to set the tone. But, but in a meeting, you really want to get business done. You know, it is really about having a clear purpose and clear outcomes from the meeting. Um, and if you look at this slide, you can see the combination of people, of people, people in the room, are they the right people in the room, the purpose of the meeting and the process, how it's conducted. Those, when those three things overlap, you have an effective meeting. When they don't overlap, it's a waste of time. And when you think how precious time is as a commodity, you know, and I think that's probably one of the number one reasons why people hate meetings is, is because they feel it's a waste of their time, you know. so. Get those three things right and your meeting will be effective. Um, this is all about inviting the right people. Okay, you don't necessarily, necessarily need to send an invitation like this. Um, but really, nothing's worse than sitting through a meeting and listening to a topic that doesn't actually apply to you um, or doesn't apply to the work that you're doing. So uh, the, the right people limit the number so if, you, if generally if you've got more than I would say more than six, but even, you know, more than eight to ten um, after that point, it really limits the ability of the room to interact effectively. You will definitely get people switching off if you have more than eight people in the room, I think, for a meeting. So limit the amount of people that are in that meeting. Make an agenda and send it out before the meeting. Um, so that's important. And every single item on that agenda should have a time limit for them. It should lead to an action plan, an action item, and it should also list the person who's responsible for that action item. So doing that kind of agenda requires some planning. It's not just a few you know, bullet points around some of the things we want to talk about. It actually means thinking about you know, what are we going to address in this meeting, uh, how long are we going to talk about it for, and what is the action item at the end of that particular point. Um, Obviously, if it's a smaller meeting, you may not need to have a formal agenda. You know, you don't have to have that. But it is important that you've got goals for that meeting and that you let everyone know in advance. It's really, really important. So I think what was difficult about my meeting last week was that the client had asked for the meeting. So really, because they'd asked for the meeting, really, it was up to them to send me perhaps some bullet points for the meeting's discussion. Now, I could have been proactive and asked them. I could have said, you know, could we have a think about what we're going to be discussing during the meeting so I can be thinking ahead. So, and I didn't do that. And I could have done that, you know. So um, I think even if you're not sent an agenda or not sent some of the uh, areas that you're going to be talking about during the meeting, you can still proactively ask for them. And I didn't do that in that case. But I think it really helps with what happens post meeting as well if you've got that clear agenda there's cl clarity around what you're going to be talking about the next thing is documents um so you know if you've got if you do have you know folders and documents that need to be shared with the team those can be put onto um, a shared drive and you can ask people to have read certain elements before the meeting if that is important. So if it's important for the meeting that people need to have, you know, be up to date with something or to have read something through, 
um, always have that information sent through in advance. What you don't want is to bring big sheaths of documents with you and hand them out during the meeting. Um, I'm sure you can guess what happens the minute you do that, because it's the same thing when you do that at training sessions. <laughs> you know, you, you just won't have people's attention because they'll be too busy leafing through all the documents that you've handed to them. Um, so as someone running the meeting, it's important to be very aware of how you are orchestrating the meeting. So, you know, if you if during a meeting you have got something you want to give to people, you know, orchestrate when you do that and give people time to digest that information during the meeting if that's what you want them to do but generally if it's a lot of information and it is important for them to have to be aware of it or, or to have read it try and get that sent in advance um, i would always include brainstorming um, perhaps at the end of a meeting um, because you can you know it allows for people to bring up things that perhaps um, weren't discussed or perhaps weren't related uh, strictly to what was being discussed um, and you can uh, you know during the meeting if people do bring up things that aren't related you can ask them to stop and tell them that you're going to have a point at the end of the meeting where we can brainstorm other ideas you see so you can use that as a way to kind of um, navigate the meeting if you like um, and Often that's a good thing to do because if you've got a brainstorming little bit at the end of the meeting, there might be some really good ideas that come up at that point. But what you don't want is for the, those ideas to be hijacking perhaps some of the um, agenda items. It, but, you know, you, brainstorming may but well be the purpose of the meeting in the first place. So it's more if you want to, um, if your meeting's about a particular issue and you want to stick to that, but you'd also like to have some ideas coming forward perhaps at the end. Um, I think if you're running the meeting, you, you need to control the conversation, but without stifling the group's creativity. So that's really important. Um, so sometimes what can happen in the meeting, and I'm sure that you've experienced this, especially if there's several people there, one person might be dominating the conversation. And so it's important if you're the facilitator or in charge of the meeting that you steer the conversation to other people. Um, you know, that can mean just going around the table asking for opinions. Um, if it's something a bit controversial, you can ask people to write down their decision on a piece of paper and put it in a hat and take, take them out of the hat. Um, uh, but, but it's just about navigating uh, the meeting and the process of the meeting. Um, and you really want it to be collaborative. You want everybody to have a chance to speak. Uh, and it's, there's, there's an art to doing that. So um, especially if you've got somebody who is taking over, which can often happen in the meeting. And it's, it's so important to be able to draw ideas from, from other people who are there as well. Um, if you're in charge of the meeting, don't allow texting or emails or any other technology during the meeting. Um, it's, it's kind of sad that one has to say that. You'd think that perhaps people would um, uh, not do that, that they would, if they're at a meeting, just be there and, and not be on their phones. But, um, you know, what you might want to do, if the meeting is an hour long, which hopefully it's not, but if it is an hour long or longer, you know, you could have a five to ten minute break to let people check their phones midway, if that seems to be important. I would say, you know, for me personally, I would be wanting people to not check their phones during the meeting, but I would probably would have to recognise that maybe it's important for some people. So having a, a break midway through can be quite a good thing. So these are these are just ideas for if you're in charge of the meeting that you are doing all of those 10 things and, and that you are kind of like conducting an orchestra, you know, you, you, you are conducting the meeting and you're ensuring that it runs well, that people are prepared, the right people are in the room, and that everyone knows what they have, what they need to do after that meeting's happened. Now, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I think I've missed out a slide there. Not to worry, I'll, um, I'll just talk you through it. Um, so if you're in a meeting, in fact, I've missed out a whole load of slides there. I don't know where they are. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk you through some of the things that I wanted to touch on here. So 
those are all points about if you're running a meeting. These next ones are about if you are going to a meeting. Um, so one of the first things is to give your attention to a meeting. So even if it's a meeting that you don't particularly want to be at, but you have to go to, go there, be on time. Um, if you're late, don't make excuses, just go there and sit down. Um, and come prepared, be present and be focused, because at least that way you are likely to gain something from that meeting. Um, and you're likely to be able to understand the dynamics uh, much, much better much, and, and, and understand what is actually happening within the meeting and within the, the people who are interacting within the meeting. Um, put your phone away. Um, everyone can, everything can wait. So put your phone away so you're not tempted to look at it. Um, and you'll find that if you do that, you will identify opportunities where you can contribute and it gives a message that you are present. There's nothing uh, more uh, visible of someone's non-ability to be present in a meeting or anything really is when they've got their phone out. Um, if you're in a meeting, do participate. Um, so that's important. Um, and generally with a meeting, the group interest is often the strongest right at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so if you don't have something that adds value to the conversation, then don't say it. If you've got something that you really want to be heard, you need to do it right at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, but it's important not to just be speaking for the sake of it either. So make sure you have something that you really do want to contribute. Um, try the one minute rule. So if you've got several points that you want to make, um, try to limit the point when you're speaking to less than one minute. Um, so if you're not presenting and if you're not setting up the discussion, in other words, you're contributing to the meeting, generally, if you talk for over one minute, it's too long. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're at a big group meeting. So do feel free to add some questions um, in the chat box. I'm sorry that I've messed up on these slides because I think I might have, um, uh, I'm not sure what I've done, but I think I might not have loaded up all the slides that I had because there should be more slides after this. But as you can see, the next slide after this is basically the end slide to our webinar. And there were some other things that I wanted to, um, to talk to you about. Um, one was the type of meetings that we have. And the other was, you know, what we think might be the future of meetings. Um, Kate was talking earlier on about walking meetings, which have become really common and are great. And if you're in a position to be able to suggest those, um, you can tick several boxes because you can tick the well-being box because you're probably outside. You can tick the collaborative and creative box because you're more likely to have more ideas when you're walking. Um, and it's just a great way to do things like brainstorming or meetings where you want people to contribute ideas um, or you want to discuss things. So it's probably quite suited to a meeting where you perhaps don't have um, a, a, you know, a strict agenda that you have to work through, but perhaps more where you just want people to come up with some ideas or discuss perhaps a difficult issue. Those kind of walking meetings can be really, really good for that. But some of the most common meetings that, that exist now, um, one is a status update meeting. These are really, really common, um, which is about, you know, project meetings, team meetings, and it's just updating each other on, pro on progress and challenges and next steps. Um, and it's quite nice in these sorts of meetings to include some kind of problem solving or decision making or something. Um, because I remember years ago going to, um, it was a Monday morning meeting. I'm not sure whether Monday morning is the best time of a meeting, but it was a Monday morning meeting. It was a meeting where everybody got together to update their, their status, update what they were doing. And I think this meeting had about 20, 25 people in it, and it would consist of people going around the table, giving their update. Now, what can happen in that sort of situation is the energy can be 
is generally really high at the beginning of the meeting. So the first people who speak are going to get most of the attention. But as you go around the table, as you go around the group, the attention gets lower. And so whether anyone's actually listening to the update or really getting something from it is, is something to, to think about. Um, but these are probably one of the most common meetings as a status update meeting. Um, Information sharing is another common meeting, which is all around, um, you know, just sharing information around perhaps changes, new products, new techniques. Um, and here's where probably quite often there'll be um, PowerPoint um, and, and presentations and things and things like that. So I just think it has to be quite carefully managed how that how that runs. Um, most inf information sharing meetings people in it are historically passive listeners. So it's not necessarily going to be a buzzing, uh, productive meeting, uh, which maybe is fine. It depends what you want to achieve, as we said at the beginning. Um, so lots of decisions are made in meetings by groups, um, which I think is a bit alarming sometimes, <laughs> but uh, lots of decisions are made. Um, and you know, perhaps small decisions are made in, in, in meetings, but bigger decisions often have their own dedicated meetings. Um, and sometimes there can be group decision making processes which can happen through the meeting. And again, the success of that depends very much on, on the person running it. And in a way, that kind of meeting is much more about facilitation than it is about perhaps chairing a meeting. Um, and you can have problem solving meetings and creative meetings, which might be about thinking outside the box and brainstorming and coming up with sharing ideas. Um, and lots of meetings, of course, now are conducted remotely. So I'm sure all of you have recently been on a conference call. Um, and I always think conference calls are quite funny because I'm not sure everyone is actually paying attention, but maybe they're often doing other things during the conference call because I do observe my husband when he's on a conference call and he usually has it on mute and he's usually doing something else at the same time. So uh, we've been talking mainly in this webinar about about face to face meetings, but actually a lot of meetings are conducted now online. Uh, there are conferences. Um, you can't see each other. Sometimes you can see each other, but not always. And if it's more people, then less likely, you know, if you're in different countries, um, you're likely just to be using an online platform. Um, and so all of the things that I've talked about that are important for meetings are probably multiplied several times over when it comes to um, when it comes to remote conferences. Um, so. I kind of want to hand over a little bit to you for any questions and comments that you have at this stage. Um, do you feel that meetings promote team building or inter-team building, or is that better done as a social event? Okay, that's interesting. So I would call, you see, I wouldn't call that necessarily a meeting. I think I would call it um, what it is, which is a team building event. Um, and I think I think that's just about being clear about why you're bringing people together um, and I guess so far I've been mainly talking about meetings where you make a decision or things get done or you come up with ideas or you know you've got a particular purpose for the meeting for me something like team building is an event rather than a meeting um, that's not to say that you couldn't include an element of team building within a meeting um, if you felt that was appropriate so you could have something within a meeting um, where that could work really well. And there are often meetings with some people who dominate discussions and other people who are rather shy, yes. So those meetings, a lot of it depends on who's running it. So if you have, you know, as we said at the beginning, not all, all meetings have somebody who's running them, but let's say you have got somebody running the meeting or you are running the meeting, then that is about controlling um, the process and controlling, um, being very aware of how much somebody is speaking, being very aware of people who are perhaps not saying so much, and also understanding that some people may not say very much because they are thinking or they are reflecting. They may not actually be shy, 
um, it can be interpreted that way sometimes, but they may just be quiet or wanting to think before they speak. So it's always very interesting when you get a group together because you can, so, so next time you're at a meeting with several people and you're not the person in charge, just have a look at how people are, the, the group dynamics, because you'll often find that the people uh, who are the loudest, as in, you know, they, they, they speak first or they have lots of things they want to say, they're not necessarily making the best contribution. Quite often, the best contribution can come from somebody who hasn't said very much because they've been reflecting and absorbing and thinking, and then they say something and it's really powerful. So it's quite interesting to observe that and also to think about what kind of person you are. You know, are you somebody who comes in straight away or do you hold back? You know, because all of that contributes to, I think, contributes to how effective the meeting is, how effective people feel the meeting is as well, because you want to feel when you come out of the meeting that you did contribute, you know, that you got something from it and that you you were valued, you know, your contribution was valued. And that's so much down to the, to the facilitator. So Chris is asking, what do you recommend if you attend a poorly run meeting, but you're not the facilitator yet? Would, would you say something to get on track? Yeah, I think that's quite delicate. So that depends again on the circumstances and on who's called the meeting um, and how much of an agenda you yourself have. Uh, so I think for me, I think what's important is before every meeting that you go to, whether you're running it or whether you're, you know, you've been invited to it, is that you think in ahead, you think in advance, why am I going to this meeting? You know, what is my purpose in this meeting? What do I want to contribute? And what am I hoping to get from it? Because I think if you have that in your head before you go to a meeting, you're going to be in a better place to respond when you're in that situation where it's not being run very well because you what you say could make a huge difference and sometimes what you say may be validating some, what somebody else has said or validating the person who's running it very badly you know because it's about you know it is about understanding group dynamics and understanding how to um i wouldn't say manipulate because that's not the right word but how to kind of orchestrate so that you can get the meeting back on track the, that requires really paying attention, really being in the moment. So that's why when you're going to a meeting, it's so important that you are in the moment, that you are aware of, of you know, the dynamics and what is happening. And then you'll be in a much better position to know what to say. Um, but it's an interesting, you know, it is an interesting, interesting area because I think as we work more with technology, the way we meet will change and the way we meet does change. But the fact is that still lots of lots of organizations have these face to face meetings. They haven't really gone away, even though we have all this technology. Um, we're just not getting we're just getting worse, I think, at, uh, at making them effective. Um, so I if you've got any other questions or ideas that you want to chat about, please put them in the chat box. Otherwise, I have, have come to the end of the webinar and I will, what I will do, because they, there were a bunch of slides that um, for some reason were not there, I'm going to make sure you get them post webinar. Um, there's, uh, yeah, there's, there were just a few extra bits around the kinds of meetings that we have and perhaps the future of meetings and what happens next. Um, so I will make sure those get sent out to you or that you can access them um, through the website. Um, we have lots of resources on the website that you can um, download. Um, do listen to the podcast. I have a podcast that comes out every Monday morning. And I'm sure some of you uh, in this webinar have read my book. But if not, go out and grab a copy of the book. I think there's a big discount on it at the moment running this week. Um, if you're in London at the end of June, we've got a live event on the 28th of June and you can register for that on the website. And on the left hand side, you can see the upcoming webinars that we've got coming up in May and in June. So I hope you found the webinar useful. I hope that the next meeting you go to, whether you're running it or whether you are contributing to it and a part of it, that you think ahead of how you would like that meeting to go and take some of these ideas on board. And I'm sure that if you do take some of these ideas on board, your meeting will have a different outcome. And that even if you're the person 
uh, even if you're not the person who's in charge of that meeting, that you can help uh, deliver a different outcome by how you behave and, and, and you know, your, your actions. So thank you very much for attending. Oh, hi, Sheila. Nice to, nice to see you on here. I hope all is well in Sri Lanka. I, I don't know if you're still there in Sri Lanka, but I've been thinking a lot of, of, of you guys. Um, and I hope to see you again on the next webinar. And apologies again for those last slides that weren't there, and I'll make sure you get them. Bye for now.